All right, good morning and welcome to the day operational briefing September 15th for the Mosquito Fire. My name is Jason Schillinger, Planning Section Chief of Team 5. If you guys would, please turn the phones and radios down, um, so silence those side conversations and we'll get you guys briefed this morning. We're going to get started with current situation with Don Fergulia, Operations Section Chief. All right. Good morning, everybody. Don Fergulia, Ops Chief here, Night Ops. Talk about uh, what went on on the fire last night. We had three uh, burn operations going last night on the fire. Uh, we'll start up here on the north end. Uh, we did the, some uh, bring some defensive firing here along the Deadwood Road to really build this corner. It's important to us. We know that the the North Fork of the American River is a is a high value asset that has uh, not seen a, a fire in a very long time. So we really want to keep it up from going to the north. Uh, along with the I-80 corridor. So building this catcher's mitt, it went well. It burned all night last night till about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, no issues, no holding concerns at all. Coming down uh, into Forest Hill, we did try to take a stab at it last night, getting it all the way back down to the river. Uh, line uh, was uh, not quite ready, and uh, the conditions just didn't uh, warrant it. And so we, we held off there last night, uh, but hope to complete that today. And then the final burn show is down here in Division Charlie Charlie, uh, where we did bring the fire all the way to the Wentworth Springs Road, or we're just about 100 feet short of the Wentworth Springs Road. Uh, there at Stumpy Meadows Reservoir, no holding issues, no concerns. Have a good shift. Weather. Good morning, incident meteorologist Eric Kurth. Well, we've got a cool start this morning. Temperatures are cooler than yesterday. It's only about 50 degrees up here at Seed Orchard on uh, Division Hotel. So it's a cool start. Humidity recoveries are higher as well. Actually, you got a 76% recovery this morning up there. And so we're going to see more moisture today. Humidity this afternoon is only going to be dropping into the 30s. And over on shaded areas on the eastern part of the fire, it's going to only drop into the 40s. Another change we're seeing today is we still have southwest winds, but it's not going to be as strong as we've been seeing in recent days. We might get some ridge winds gusting up to 11, 12 miles an hour this afternoon, up canyon winds 4 to 7 miles an hour. So there's going to be less wind. We are going to see a lot of sun on the fire as well, except on that eastern side where, of course, the, the smoke is shifting with that uh, onshore flow. Tonight, we're going to see those lighter winds as well, and it's going to cool down. Good overnight recovery as well. Uh, just a heads up, the southwest winds are going to be increasing on Saturday, so we could be getting some gusts up in the 20s. With this system that's pushing in, it looks like a cold system, and we could see some wetting rain later in the weekend, early next week. Have a safe shift. Fire behavior. Good morning, Jonathan Pangburn. All right, so not focusing on that wetting rain potential, instead focusing on the fact that we don't have that right now. We have a nice southwest flow that's going to keep pushing the fire, and so this whole southwestern flank is already in mop-up status, and you have favorable wind. Coming around to the firing activity that's on this Wentworth Springs Road area in uh, Branch 20, Stumpy Meadows, starting to turn the corner. As you turn the corner and you come up toward Devil's Peak, um, you have a combination of wind and slope in alignment helping to drive that. On the other hand, it, as you see out there, the fuels really start to change as you transition into that Kingfire scar. That's similar to what we're seeing up in Branch 10. As you get past the Deadwood Road area and you really get into that fire scar, it turns into really young Manzanita and some Ceanothus. And, uh, it will take head fire and it will definitely move, but it won't take firing quite as well for backing. So uh, just keep that in mind with, uh, with your plan. In this Juliet and Mike area, especially Mike, where you saw all the, the growth in the large header yesterday, expect more of the same. But you have the two different areas of the fire now because as this generates that smoke and the, it gets pushed from the winds up into here, it's starting to shade out. So two different aspects of, or two different areas of fire behavior. And I mentioned the, fi the King Fire Scar down here, and I'm going to let you know, especially for you folks who are on a 24 and not seeing me tomorrow for a briefing, tomorrow's the anniversary. At 9.39 a.m., there was a burnover on the King Fire. So please, 
I want you to be aware, be cautious out there. It was not a wind-driven event on that either. It was a fuels-driven event, and it was a massive blow-up, and we don't want anything like that to happen. So please, be safe out there. Thank you. Reviewing your 202, your objectives, incident, or correction. <clears throat> Leaders intent, management objectives, along with control objectives remain the same. Please review those with your crews out on the line. All right, good morning, Spencer Andreas, Planning Ops, with your daily lion leadership. Operations, Steve Burns. Here. Deputy Ops, Nolan Hale. Here. Night Operations, Don Fregolia. Deputy Operations, Knight, Tom Smith. Here. Planning Ops, Dave Soldavini. Here. Landon Hack. Here. And myself. Branch 3, Gus Boston. Here. Alpha, Graham Gronerman. Here. Charlie, John Woody. Here. Branch 3, Contingency, Burns Brimhall. Here. Branch 5, Mark Abelow. Here. Delta, Nate McCarthy. Here. With trainee, Venmer Dear Caruza. Here. Foxtrot, Mike Kidwell. Here. Trainee, Peter Hardy. Here. Branch 10, Gary Monday. Here. Tad Hare, trainee. And Mike Klimlick Knight. Hotel, Jimmy Hildago. Here. Tony Ochipiti, trainee. Here. With Knight of Ray Torres and Hector Sanchez, who are on the line. Juliet, Patrick Callahan. Right here. Sean Watkins, trainee. Here. And Fred Tan. Here. Okay, the, the Branch 15 folks are over in the Placerville camp. Steve Clark is Branch 15 with Alec Lane as Knight. Division Mike, Jeb Pronto. Romeo, Anthony Sagona, with Mark Johnson at night. Branch 20, Chris Stevens, with Pete English as trainee, and Rich Sonsting, as well as a 24-hour resource for nights. Charlie Charlie, Jack Sevelson, with Hagelson as a trainee, and Brian Mork at night. Golf Golf, Nathan Osborne. Branch 25, Brian Ham. Kilo Kilo, Ryan Wagoner. Yankee Yankee, Jeff Chase. Here. Zulu Zulu unstaffed. Branch 25, Ron McLaughlin. Here. With Brian Powers as trainee. Here. All right, turn over to day operations for your work assignments and priorities. Thank you, Spencer. Uh, so today, our priority is going to be in Division Charlie and trying to secure this piece down into the Middle Fork, bringing it from north to south down into the Middle Fork and tying in that west end again. Um, the issue with some of that is that there is a gap in the river. It's about a half, an hour, half a mile between where the lines come down from the north and the lines come down to the south. So we're going to look at trying to and, and, and close that gap for a little bit and definitely have good coverage in there. So priority, Division Charlie, um, number one. As we go into the top of the hotel, priority up there is to, to uh, get some depth off of that Deadwood Road, get this thing kind of a big captured mitt. This uh, doesn't really depict as much fire as we got in there, but uh, really good work in there. Same with Wentworth Springs on the bottom. Uh, we've got fire down to Wentworth Springs Road. The problem we have now is that we are into a new fuel type and we have to be careful with what we do. So I talked a couple of days about a two-prong effect. We are going with the with the lines out on the edge on, on Wentworth and Foothill Road, coming across the top and trying to tie it in outside. That's looking real good. We've got a lot of good uh, prep and contingency on that. But we also, the second prong is to try and come as close as we can to the main fire safely and to cut off the fire as best we can. Um, obviously, we've got river drainage that'll be challenging for us, but we're going to do the best we can to, to keep the fire spread to the east by coming in close. We've got a lot of good dozer line, a lot of good work in there, um, pretty impressive. Uh, we got uh, lines all the way around the, the, the sequoias in there. Today, we're going to go and fire a four-acre piece and try and secure that up um, without any, hopefully, any effect to the main fire. Should be done. We've got uh, the resources in there to do it and a high confidence level of that being complete. With that being said, listening to fire behavior. So we're coming into different fuel types down here. And uh, we're going to get in and do some test burns, cut off some blocks, and see how that, see how that, uh, that brush burns and whether it's uh, um, uh, equitable for us to keep burning and 
uh, moving along and trying to figure out how we're going to burn that stuff. All right. Have a good day. Air Operations. Good morning. Ira Graves with Air Operations. I'll let you guys refer to your uh, air op summary for our lineup of helicopters. Uh, we, we did get a little boost yesterday. Uh, we still have our two scoopers out of South Lake Tahoe. They did some good work for us the past couple days. Um, we're going to have a change in our night operation. Our night assets that we've previously had are going to be swapping out with some new ones. Uh, so they'll be coming in today and uh, be accessible for you. We also have both of our mobile retardant plants up. Um, so we've got one down at Georgetown for some retardant usage up down in this Branch 325 area. And we have another one up in uh, Blue Canyon Hella Base for that uh, Branch 5, Branch 10 area. Uh, have a safe shift. Okay, communications. Good morning. Dave Larkin, Communication Unit Leader. All right, very important. Uh, we have found some important updates and upgrades to the clone that was issued yesterday, okay? So that means that everybody clones this morning, all right? Clones this morning. Even if you cloned yesterday, we need you to clone again this morning, all right? So there are important updates there. Mosquito Communications is up and running as of right now, and so they're going to need everybody to check in. They'll be doing a roll call to make sure that everybody has gone from Grass Valley over to the new NIFSI system this morning, okay? We'll be on the new NIFSI system this morning. From here in Camp ICP, you'll be looking at the C3 repeater that's on your uh, 205. So make sure you check in before you engage. So this means we're going from a commercial system for the TNF over to the NIFSI system, all right? two completely different systems. Be aware, you're gonna have a different footprint, different coverage footprint when you're out there. So what you had coverage before, maybe not so good. Where you didn't have, maybe great. So make sure as you roll through your divisions that you uh, pick the best repeater that serves you and get the best signal strength, okay? So learn the new footprint that, uh, that covers the areas out there. Thank you. The medical. Uh, good morning, uh, Robert Russell, uh, Team 5 Medical. So once again, I'm going to ask you to think about what you're going to do in the event of a medical emergency. So what resources do you have available to you out there on the line? How long is it going to take somebody that's injured to get them off the line to a point of extraction? And how long is it going to take to get them to definitive care? So the tools that we have available to you to figure that out or help you make that uh, decision process or guide you through that decision process are the information found in the IRPG and the information is found on the ICS-206. So throughout the course of the day, continue to evaluate it and reevaluate it and think about how you're going to implement that plan to make sure that it is still going to be the best plan. Um, additionally, for uh, Yankee Yankee, um, our EMTs uh, did not show up in the plan. You will still have paramedic Leslie Scott and EMT Scott Blanford assigned to Yankee Yankee. Have a safe day. Safety. Good morning, Dave Welch, Team 5 Safety. Well, let's start off with uh, trends, okay? Injury trends, I told you, the, I think the last time I was up here, that I would bring up trends. Beautiful sunset that we, or sunrise that we can all see today, and we can see it with our eyes. We're getting eye injuries. We're getting people with debris and stuff in their eyes, and the reason we're getting it is because people are not wearing their goggles out there or they're not wearing safety glasses out there when they're engaged in activities where stuff is flying around. So please, protect your eyes. Wear your safety glasses, wear, wear that equipment. If you don't have them, we have supply. They're there. Uh, also trees. We got more wind coming up, so we wanna be, make sure that we're uh, aware of trees, even green trees. We're evaluating them as we're going into the, into the line and we're mopping up. Uh, we wanna make sure that our saws are in tip-top condition, have everything that we need. We have a saw shop there for your needs uh, if your saw is not running as it should. Next thing, the comm plan. Can't say it enough, you're gonna hear it again. You have to get a new clone today. Please make sure before you go out in the field that you're on the same comms. Uh, talk to a friend. If you're uh, technically challenged like myself, make sure that you know how to work that radio before you go out 
and, and check with people and make sure we're all talking on the same channel. And then finally, um, COVID. It is still among us, all right? We've been really, really good here, but we still need to be COVID aware. We need to be focused on the fire, but COVID aware. If you have some symptoms, go get tested. Don't take the risk that it's just the flu and end up giving this thing around and really, really affecting our, our, our mission out there. Uh, lastly, thank you, be safe. Resource advisor. Good morning, folks. Kevin Keeler, lead resource advisor. As the fire moves east into more significant public lands, we've got a bunch of significant public resources out there uh, that we'd like you to know about and uh, accommodate as you're operating out there. We've got some pretty significant stuff. The northernmost sequoia grove in the country. I appreciate ops uh, for putting resources to help protect that. Uh, we've got one of my favorites, the Last Chance Graveyard out there. And that's uh, the home of the uh, person who uh, discovered uh, silver over in Nevada. So uh, we're working on that, but we're also got people, reads out, who are flagging this with this avoidance tape right here. So this doesn't mean that there's bumblebees out there. This means we've got significant natural or cultural resources on the other side of this tape. So check your IAPs. It's usually on the last uh, couple lines of your division for the reefs who are assigned there. And check in with them. Uh, if you have questions, that sort of thing, we can help you out. We're pretty good with maps out there. Uh, thanks, and have a good day. Human Resources. Good morning, Adam Alvarez, Human Resources. Um, got a message for you on page 58, so if you don't want to listen to me, please read it later. Uh, but this has to do with you all working, uh, doing important work and lo working hard, long shifts, and sometimes attitudes could get out of whack and they need to be balanced back. But never ever tolerate anybody being disrespectful or bullying you. We're doing too uh, good of a job to let somebody uh, uh, take your authority and your power away from you. So if you've experienced any disrespect or bullying on the job, uh, whether towards you or whether towards somebody else. If it's your uh, part of your work crew or whatever and you see them being mistreated, don't tolerate it. Don't stand up to your uh, crew boss or anything on your own. If you have something, come to human resource or whatever peer support that you have and report that. If it goes unreported, it's not gonna stop. Nobody needs to be treated in a bad way. So. Just wanted to give you that message, read it. It's a little bit different than what I said here. And um, have a great shift. And closing comments, Unified Incident Commander Rick Young. So good morning. The intensity with which we fight fire is based on the values at risk. And we've talked multiple days in a row, life and property are our highest priority, and that continues to be the same. We need to uh, continue to mitigate the hazards so we can get people back in their homes as quickly as possible. And the Reed just talked about some natural and cultural values at risk, but there's a lot of other values at risk on this east side. Values at risk, um, they deal with uh, power supplies, domestic water supplies, and some high dollar commercial timber interests out there. And they've been doing a lot of work to try to mitigate that, the, the damage of the fire, the potential damage of the fire. So I just need our operations folks working with those folks to tr try to stitch that into our plan to minimize the impacts of that infrastructure and those assets. A Couple of things I heard this morning, comp plan. Um, there's a change to the comp plan. That always makes me a little concerned on days that happen. So make sure you guys are getting that clone and test that before you need it today. And then finally, you know, the little optimism here, some rain coming. I've been doing this a while, and I can't tell you the number of times I heard rain's coming in September in California to be disappointed several days later. My point is, don't take your foot off the gas. We got a lot of work out there still. We got a lot of values at risk, so keep it up. Thank you for your time. Be safe. All right, um, uh, if you're unassigned, Come on up, we'll get you guys assigned. There is gonna be a formal briefing tonight for the night resources. I know you guys aren't the night resources, but 1800 will be another briefing here tonight for the night folks. Uh, breakouts are posted. If you need to take, if you don't know where that's at, there's a little sign out front there where the plans are. You guys can take a look at that. And a cooperators meet at 10 o'clock. So have a good day. Thank you.